Good afternoon. I'd like to introduce myself. I am Dr. Melba Hernandez. I'm a psychiatrist for over 10 years at Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio, Texas. I work with active duty and non-active duty soldiers and their families who have served in the Afghan, Afghanistan and Iraqi war. Since the beginning of the war, I and my colleagues have seen a rise in post-traumatic stress disorder, also known as PTSD, affecting our military soldiers. PTSD is a chronic complex mental disorder that can develop after an individual has been exposed to or has experienced major trauma or a life-threatening event. PTSD is not just affecting our military soldiers, it can develop at any age and affect any gender. It is estimated that over 24 million suffer from some form of PTSD, whether it is a mild or severe form. PTSD can result from experiences with death, sexual assault or rape, natural disasters, and of course combat exposure. PTSD is a psychological disorder that patients either have experienced or re-experienced trauma through nightmares, flashbacks with vivid memories that make the patient feel as though the event is happening again. Patients often avoid certain activities, withdraw from society and social settings, distancing themselves from family and friends. The arousal symptoms will include feelings as if the patient is in constant danger, accompanied with a sense of panic that something uh, bad is about to happen. The patient may be irritable and or aggressive in times like these. The symptoms may cause hypervigilance with problems of unable to concentrate and an inability to sleep. The mood and cognitive symptoms may include loss of interest in activities once enjoyed by the patient in the past difficulty relating to family, spouse, and friends is also a factor in PTSD. The patient may feel guilty or shame that they survived when so many uh, did not. This may be accompanied with anger and horror. Comorbid disorders will include depression, substance abuse through alcohol and drugs, um, panic disorder, agoraphobia, anxiety disorder and or social phobia. When a patient comes in to see me and shows signs of any of these symptoms, I refer them to hospitalization for further evaluation. Symptoms of suicidal thoughts, homicidal thoughts, and substance abuse is a red flag indicator and the patient needs immediate care. I commonly prescribe exposure therapy and group therapy including the families of the patient while not immediately it is a progressive um, uh, state uh, that the patient must um, go through and then uh, when the time is right then the family is integrated in that group therapy. Among the care I also prescribe antidepressants, anti-anxiety medication as well as a sleep aid. I also suggest an exercise program such as yoga and walking or any kind of exercise that is helpful to relieve stress and anxiety. Immersing in nature is also therapeutic. I generally see my patients one to two times a week and I also include family and group sessions. I, I am currently seeing a 32 year old Hispanic female who is a second lieutenant um, and is registered medical nurse who I will call Jane. Nurse Jane returned from active duty where she was stationed at the Landstuhl Medical Center Army Base in Landstuhl, Germany. It is a uh, hospital at the base for um, combat soldiers that are brought in who are injured during combat. Jane is a single mother of a six-year-old son who was being taken care of by her parents while she was on deployment. Jane came to my office a month ago and upon entering the examination room, she was already in tears. Jane explained to me that she is having trouble sleeping due to many nightmares she was having of treating the soldiers who were injured in combat and flown into the base for treatment. She is having difficulty coping with the soldiers that could not be saved and trying to stay positive while treating those who could be saved, but will forever bear the scars 
of war. She states that she feels helpless and carries a lot of guilt and shame. She, Jane says that she is very protective of her son and does not want anything to happen to him and does not want to go out in public for fear of something that may happen to herself and her son. She has withdrawn from her parents and friends and is isolating herself and her son um, from uh, outside activities, family, and friends. She is severely depressed and because of her symptoms of anxiety and trauma, I diagnosed Jane with PTSD. As part of her treatment with exposed therapy and group therapy, um, I have prescribed her anti-anxiety and antidepressant medication, um, like I said, with a sleep aid. I will continue to counsel Jane one-on-one -on -one and slowly incorporate her family in those group sessions, as well as exposure sessions with other soldiers diagnosed with PTSD. It is very crucial that uh, the patients who are diagnosed with PTSD, especially soldiers who have um, uh, been deployed and have served several um, tours in the war, um, have these resources upon returning to the United States to have counseling, whether they show signs of symptoms of PTSD or not. It is crucial that these services are made and mandatory to those soldiers and veterans coming back from war um, to combat the uh, symptoms that they may um, experience later that they would may not have upon returning immediately from combat. This is the one thing that I would stress to all healthcare professionals that they be open to um, talk to their patients and evaluate with simple questions and their answers to determine whether this can, uh, soldier would benefit from receiving uh, counseling or therapy, um, exposure therapy or group therapy with other soldiers who are uh, coming back from their tours from the war. Um, PTSD is a chronic condition that presents a variety of clinical symptoms. Veterans are often reluctant to see seek help because of the stigma associated with the disorder. We have to get past the stigma. There's no shame in coming back with these symptoms and we want to get that out to the soldiers so that they can come in, feel comfortable to ask for help and that they get the help immediately. We as a healthcare professionals need to be more vigilant when evaluating the patients, um, having one or more symptoms of PTSD. There is an educational deficit that must be bridged by addressing these symptoms and the stigma and shame the patient feels and provide the highest care and resources to assist the patients in getting immediate treatment. I hope you will join me in this endeavor so that we can service and help our returning soldiers. Thank you very much.